today we're going to be talking about calorimetry. In calorimetry, we use a calorimeter. A calorimeter is an object used in lab to determine how much heat is associated with a chemical reaction. When we have a constant pressure calorimeter, which is what we'll be using, we refer to that as a coffee cup calorimeter because most of the time it's just made out of two coffee cups. The equation we're going to be using is heat lost by a substance is equal to the heat gained by water. It may not necessarily be water, but whatever substance we are putting the other substance into. Basically, that goes down to Q lost or heat lost is equal to heat gained. When energy is being lost, we have a negative sign in front of that. We know the substance that's losing energy because it's going to be the one that starts at the higher temperature. And because Q equals MC delta T, we can say M delta T C P equals M delta T C P. And again, whichever side has the higher temperature, we can put a negative with that side if we're solving for temperature. If we're not solving for temperature, then we could just do bigger minus smaller and that will work out. So here we have 3.9 grams of aluminum and we heated it to 99 degrees Celsius. We dropped it into a styrofoam cup with 10 milliliters of water. Remember that the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So when they give you the volume of water, they're also giving you the mass of water. We know that we're going to be using our M delta T C P equals M delta T C P because we have two different substances. We have aluminum and we also have water. If I only had one substance, I know that I would just do Q equals M delta T C P. Make sure that you're keeping track of your substances. We have aluminum and we have water on this side. You do not need to rearrange your equations before solving them. Just make sure that you're keeping your data separate. So I have aluminum's information. I need the mass, the change in temperature, and the CP. From the problem, I have the mass of aluminum. My change in temperature, it started at 99, and it's ending at 28.6. So if I did final minus initial, notice it gives me a negative sign. That's why one side is always going to be negative to counteract that negative. If I just did 99 minus 28.6, then I wouldn't have had a negative and I wouldn't have had to worry about the negative in the equation. Remember though, if you're solving for any final or initial temperature, you will need to make sure you're doing final minus initial. And then I'm looking for the CP of aluminum. My water information. I have 10 milliliters, so that's the same as 10 grams. My change in temperature, the final is always the same for both substances, regardless of if it tells you that. And it started at 22.6, giving me a change of 6. And my CP, remember, is one that you should have memorized, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now we can plug everything in. And so solving for CP, 
I get this. I have my joules. I'm going to divide by grams degrees Celsius. Looking back at the problem, I need three significant figures. And so that's my final answer. All right, go ahead and try this one on your own. Restart when you have the answer, but don't try the next one. So iron is starting at my higher temp. So notice I have a negative sign. So I need a negative on iron if you're doing final minus initial. And so setting them equal to each other and plugging everything in. If you rearranged and solved that correctly, you should have gotten this in the calculator, but we wanted three significant figures. And so we get this. All right, this next one is a harder one because we're looking for the final temperature. Also, people don't realize that it's a calorimetry problem because we're only dealing with water. But notice that the waters are at different temperatures and we even have different masses of them, which tells you that you have two different substances. We have water at 82 degrees Celsius and we have water at 42.4 degrees Celsius. So we still have to use our calorimetry equation. So my water at 82 information, I'm going to list out all my information again. In this case, because I'm looking for final temperature, you have to do final minus initial. This is my higher temp, so this is the one that's going to get the negative sign. Whichever one starts at the higher temperature because it's going to go down in temperature. So plugging that in. Looking at this problem, because it has water on both sides, we can eliminate the CP. So write it and then you can cross it out. But you do need to write it to begin with, showing that you do know that specific heat goes there. 
Just like we did in this specific heat video, when you're looking for temperature, you have to distribute. So we're going to do 35 times TF times whatever's over here. In this case, we can ignore the 4.184, so we don't have to distribute to both of them. But if we didn't eliminate it, that's what you would need to do. So negative 35 times TF is negative 35 TF. And then negative 35 times 82 or negative 35 times negative 82 gives you 2870. Then we do the same thing on the other side, 98.3 times TF. And then 98.3 times negative 42.4. Combine like terms. And isolate variable. Make sure that your final temperature is between your two initial values. It's between 82 and 42.5, so that looks good. And if you're unsure of your algebra, you can always plug it back into your original equation and both sides should equal or come very close to equally. Go ahead and try this last one on your own. In this case, you're looking for initial temperature. So again, you're going to have to do final minus initial, but you'll only have to distribute on one side instead of both sides. Restart the video when you think you have an answer. So the first thing you should have done was written out your information and then figured out which side is going to get the negative. For my sulfur, we went from 45 to 79. So that's a positive change in temperature, meaning that calcium started at the higher temperature. So calcium gets the negative sign. Then you plug everything in. On the left side, we get 100.255, and on the right side, we distribute it. And then distributed the other side. Combine like terms. And isolated the variable. And so my initial temperature was 98.2, which makes sense. If I mix something that is 45, degrees and something that's 98 that my final temperature would be somewhere between them or 79. 
So make sure that you are looking. In this case, we did not have water in the problem at all, so you don't have to have water. Anytime you have two substances, you'll be using this equation. If you have one substance, then you'll be using the one we did previously, just the Q equals L delta T C T. Anytime you're looking for temperature, you will need to distribute. If you're looking for final temperature, you'll distribute on both sides. If you're looking for initial temperature, you'll only have to distribute on one side.